So hello, and uh, this is uh, it's just a quick hello. And uh, uh, today I'm um, I'm wearing this uh, dive watch, and uh, it's um, uh, it's a forty five millimeter, and uh, made by uh, Armida. And uh, if I take it off, you can see it there. Now it's quite a large watch, and. Um, I stumbled across this, uh, uh, these watches and I was, I was impressed with them and uh, the colourway in particular I, I really liked and uh, yes it, it is a large watch, um, you probably can't see there but if I, if I put it on my wrist, it's very difficult showing watches when, when they're on the wrist and I think this is why many people you know, don't even try but that is a, a 45 millimetre uh, watch and uh, it has a brown sunray dial and uh, a brown strap here. And uh, you know, it's, it's a big watch with a huge uh, dome, but I, I sort of like it. And uh, it, um, it's got a yellow, uh, an orange minute hand. It's, it's totally cool. I, I'm, I'm aware that when I shove my wrist in front of the camera, it doesn't look very good. And uh, <laughs> it probably looks very, you know, like I'm demented or something. But um, uh, this is a, a quick hello, um, and uh, I'm trying out a few things. And uh, you know, if uh, if there are too many G-Shocks, uh, I apologise for that. And uh, one of the things I've realised is I'm trying to get hold of um, of, of watches uh, that I like uh, the look of, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of something amusing to say about them or, or, or some Star Wars character. Um, I'm finding that uh, G-Shock is, is fantastic for uh, their colorways match you know, these fabulous characters, especially in Star Wars. Uh, but I, I imagine you know, if you surf the internet, you'd find a, a character for this guy here, you know, beige strap and um, a, a brown sunburst style with a bit of black. Um, it does look pretty good, doesn't it? And uh, it, uh, you know, so I, I mean, I've searched high and low uh, for all sorts of watches, and uh, there are many brands that I like. Um, uh, you know, of course, the, the popular brands like uh, Seiko, Omega, uh, Rolex. Uh, all the Swiss brands, I, I, you know, I, I like so much. So it's a little bit like. You know, being a child in a sweet shop, uh, um, you want to try them all. Now, um, that forces you to be very critical of what you're looking at, and uh, it makes you well. It should, in theory, make you more specifically search out designs and brands that you like. Uh, so I am I'm doing that, um, but obtaining the watches is very difficult and. Um, uh, unless you um, can borrow them or purchase them. Uh, you have to put a bit of effort into going where the watches are and then you have to let someone allow you to film them. And uh, But I'm in progress with that and um, uh, I know there are challenges with lighting and things. And uh, one of the things that I um, have always done and um, is I, I've always ever shot photographs and video in natural lighting. Now sometimes you're, you're in a building and uh, the lights are on so it's impossible. And um, uh, you know that will happen, uh, but one of the things that I tried to do is to never use artificial light, and uh, so it's very challenging because often it's difficult uh, photographing watches. Um, you know, you can probably see with some of my shots. You know, only half the watch is highlighted; the other half is dark, uh, and that's when I rely on you know very good quality lenses and uh, lenses that can operate in a, a large range of light. So I'm in the process of that also. And also I want the video to be you know, shot in, in natural light. So it's something that I'm working on and also editing. Now, you know, one of the things I'm aware of is that, that my editing is absolutely terrible and um, I'm learning as fast as I can uh, to do it myself, but uh, it's actually a, a skill, uh, it's actually a very credible skill and the more I look at it, the more I realise 
uh, people that edit you know, v um, AV you know, for this sort of thing on YouTube, they are very skilled people and, and there is a skill to it. So you know, when you see words flying across the screen and um, the, uh, the, the voice and, uh, and the color matches perfect and these great visuals coming in and out, and um, you know, flipping over. Um, you know, that's actually editing, and someone has spent a lot of time learning how to do that. And you know, I want to be able to do that, but uh, and I am learning. Um, but one of the problems I have is my time, and um, I don't have a lot of time really to to shoot video. And um, so it puts pressure on me to, you know, shoot something like this and, uh, and send it out. And, you know, half the time I don't really know what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, so you might be sick of Star Wars characters. So I apologize for that. Um, but um, uh, so my videos will often be a little bit rough and ready. Uh, but hopefully the, the camera will have, you know, the, the quality will be good, will be production broadcast quality good enough. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I'm hoping. And, um, uh, and the, the reason for this video is I wanted to say to people, look, I don't mind negative comments below or any comments on anything that you might like or dislike or subjects you might like me to talk about. Um, uh, if anything that I read is appealing or is something I can do, I, I will respond and do it. Um, I, because uh, your audience or people that watch your videos, they probably are very clever, informed people and they probably know a lot more than you do. So uh, I feel like saying, hey, you know, don't just sit there and don't say anything, you know, just say a comment, you know, even if it's negative. Well, you know, don't be rude and slanderous. That, that probably isn't a good thing. But you know, anything that's sort of interesting and um, uh, conducive to improvement, that would be great. And uh, I will try and do that. Uh, but also, I, I'm trying to remain um, a very different and um, uh, odd, I suppose. And, uh, and also, I'm trying to bring business talk into uh, these videos about wristwatches and chat about uh, design, functionality and the business and also the industry. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to chat to brands and perhaps um, finding out about their points of view with respect to design and function and where products are going. Uh, because uh, one of the, the very interesting things that I found about looking at wristwatches is the, uh, the smartwatch um, impact into the watch industry. And noticing that um, uh, some people thought that um, the Apple Watch you know, could be the, the downfall of uh, the, the Swiss watch industry and expensive mechanical timepieces. Other people saw the smartwatch as a completely different product. And um, that's sort of probably the camp I'm in. And um, I don't see the, the, the Apple Watch as a threat uh, to wristwatches at all, to be honest. And um, I've used myself as a, as a working example. So, um, I've gone on with life and gone to meetings and done jobs and um, I have access to smartwatches, uh, G-Shocks and, uh, and some mechanical watches. And uh, I literally, you know, watch my decision making and then I, I grab the thing, put it on my wrist and off I go. And I'm really wanting to understand uh, how people are interacting with their timepieces. Um, what switches them on, what are they looking for and why they are wearing a wristwatch. And um, what's so interesting is, you know, I've spoken to people that will put on a mechanical wristwatch. Uh, they don't even set the time. They, you know, they just wear the, the, the mechanical watch all day long. And um, they haven't even set the time, you know, so they've gone to their smartphone for, for the time. And uh, I actually thought it was very cool because um, it, um, it, it's a really um, a positive remark about the timepiece that they're wearing because they've obviously made a decision to wear an object around their wrist. Uh, you know, it has design, it has aesthetic, and that's obviously been the thing that has drawn people, you know, to that watch. And uh, the reason that they haven't, uh, haven't set it is because of the function part. You know, it might take them a minute to set the watch. 
and they probably know that tomorrow they, they might not wear a watch or they might not um, uh, or they'll wear a different watch so um, there's no real point in them setting the watch because the value that they get from it reading the time for that day you know is sort of nullified by the fact that tomorrow they might wear a different watch you know so things like that I'm very interested in and uh, you know I do want to know more about it and that is one of the reasons um, uh, why I've often used uh, digital watches recently because the time is always set correctly now you could say the same thing about the smartwatch and what has been so interesting is that you know I've been picking up the Casio G-Shock over a smartwatch and it seems to be happening all the time now in one of the reasons for that was a functionality based reason and uh, because it's the winter and you know I, uh, it's cold you have to wear long sleeves and uh, uh, I often found that the sleeve, uh, that the sensors on the smartwatch would end up over the sleeve and uh, it would stop the, the smartwatch you know, recording my workout and uh, I kept on being so cross that, you know, that, that the watch hadn't you know, fully recorded my workout. And, um, I, and, and then if you read the information, you're supposed to wear the watch tight to your wrist and I thought, hold on a second, I don't want to wear the watch tight to my wrist. You know, I want the watch to fit or be slightly loose. And at that point, I thought, I'm not fighting with this, uh, with this uh, smartwatch. You know, I'm going to put on the G-Shock. And uh, because the G-Shock was exactly how I wanted it and the time works. You know, plus it has a stopwatch, so I was able to time the thing anyway. And, um, you know, but then, you know, the smartwatch, it is a, it is a super thing. It is very good. And uh, in the summer, of course, or when you're not wearing a, a long sleeve a garment, um, you know, it's never an issue. And also, if it fits, it's not an issue either. But um, uh, the um, uh, LCD watches, the, uh, uh, the Casio G-Shock, was becoming a thing I was drawn to. You know, but for example, like today, you know, I'm wearing this. And, um, you know, I'm one of those people, I, I actually haven't set the time because, um, it, you know, at some point I'll probably go somewhere and uh, I may take this off and, uh, and wear something else. Um, but knowing me, I won't do that. I'll actually keep this on. And then at some point, I'll really need the accurate time. Uh, my smartphone will be in my pocket. You know, I'll glance at the watch and think that's the right time and it'll mess my day up. So, yeah. Uh, so, you know, and also we go through phases. Um, uh, you know, and, you know, I'm one of those people actually that often doesn't wear um, a, a wristwatch. I, I know that's amazing, but I really don't um, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing things and, um, it, uh, and, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't have this, uh, but, uh, but often, you know, around five o'clock, you know, I know I'm going to cook something and that's when I run upstairs and grab a G-Shock uh, because I want to time the eggs and things I'm cooking. So that is interesting that, you know, I wear a mechanical watch. I don't set the time. Uh, a lot of the day I don't wear a watch. Um, when I'm cooking, I grab a G-Shock and um, when I'm doing exercise, you know, I grab the smartwatch and then I'm cross because the sensors have been um, uh, hindered by my long sleeve garment. Uh, so, you know, what an interesting situation I have with wristwatches. You know, it's almost crazy and, um, you know, and dysfunctional rather than functional. But uh, I don't think me wearing G-Shocks and timing eggs is uh, negative. I, I think that's quite cool. And also you look cool in the kitchen when, you know, you're, you're rocking a, a, um, a G-Shock. And uh, yeah, over the years I've had uh, the, the Frogman and it's a great big thing. And uh, when you're in the kitchen cooking, wearing a Frogman, um, you know, people have said, what are you wearing? And you know, you've had a great big Frogman on your wrist. Anyway, this video was really a quick hello, to be honest, and uh, you know that's all it is. And um, hopefully, I'm going to create uh, videos that are interesting. And um, and please leave a comment below. And uh, uh, and uh, yeah, please be kind.
Uh, we don't have to be. Anyway, I'm going to say ciao for now and speak to you again.